And thank you so much for joining my webinar. Today I am Marcus Sheridan, and I am really excited to talk about a subject that is of particular interest to me and hopefully to you as well, because over the last, I guess, three or four years, I have had the uh, tremendous opportunity of working with uh, some businesses, big and small, that have experienced tremendous success in the content marketing space. I was able to experience it with my swimming pool company, and I started consulting with other businesses and brands, and it's been fun to watch them have so much magic. But I wanted to talk about what makes some successful versus others that simply just can't seem to get out of their own way with this crazy thing that we hear so much about, of course, that is content marketing. And I find that there's five major qualities, and we're going to dive into those right now. So here's the thing. If you want your organization to have tremendous success with content marketing, actually get results, and when I say results, I mean traffic, leads, and sales, you've got to understand these five principles. The first one is the principle of zero moment of truth and 70%. So let me define zero moment of truth. Zero moment of truth, and this is critical, this is the first time somebody actually contacts your company. So it might be a form on your website. It might be that they called you. It might be that they walked into your retail store. It might be... Um, that uh, they walked into your office, but this is the first time they actually contact your company. Now, this is this stat that I'm about to give you is as applicable to B2B as it is B2C, so there's no exceptions to the things that you're going to hear me talk about today. In fact, B2B is is prolific in terms of the companies that have done this the right way. So what's the relationship between 70% and zero moment of truth? Well, this is what we know because the Google Lords have told us this, and of course they're never wrong, are they? And that is that 70% of the buying decision is made before zero moment of truth. In other words, before they contact your company, before they talk to a salesperson, before they actually fill out that form on your website or walk into your office or walk into your store or call you directly, they've made 70% of their buying decision. And of course, this is dramatically impacting the way sales have always been done. It's impacting the relationship between sales and marketing, and it's changing the way that people buy. Case in point, love showing this slide right here. It used to be a great profession, that of shoe salesperson. This guy here, back in the day, he made a lot of money. Had a lot of network, had a lot of friends, and he was successful. Unfortunately for him, that business model has gone the way of the dodo bird, and that is because today, especially when it comes to women, they buy their shoes online. Now, five or ten years ago, it would have been preposterous to think that people, especially women, would have bought their shoes online without trying the shoes on first. But today, they don't have to try it on first. People like Zappos have made it possible for them not to worry about that. And because of companies like Zappos, this shoe salesperson doesn't have a job today in most organizations. How does that apply to you? It very much applies to you. I'll be talking about that in another webinar that I'll be giving in this series, but the fact of the matter the fact of the matter remains is this. Marketing today, if we're being honest with ourselves, has a greater influence on the actual sales process than does the sales department. That's sacrilegious to say to some. Me personally, I don't really care how it sounds. I just know that that's the way that it is, and as companies, we have to embrace it as well if we're going to be ready for what's next, all right? So that's the first quality. They've got to understand the power of zero moment of truth. Second quality, management and employee buy-in when it comes to this thing called content marketing. I'm telling you, I have seen so – over the past three years, I think the number one email that I've gotten is from people in marketing departments that are frustrated because they want to embrace the power of content. They want to see their company as teachers. They want to become the Wikipedia of their space, but yet when they bring it up to their team members, they bring it up to management, the idea gets shot down. This is a big problem because if you want to be great with content marketing, management has to be bought in. The rest of the team has to be brought in, specifically salespeople, 
yeah, based on that zero moment of truth number, and you've got to have a unified vision. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about of one of the most successful companies I've worked with, one of my clients, a company called Segway Technologies. Now, what Segway does is they build web data and mobile applications. They do it mostly in the B2C space, some in the B2G, business to government space, and some B2C, but mostly it's B2B. And so they came to me and they said, we want to be great at content. We want to be the thought leaders of our space. We want more traffic, leads, and sales. And what happened was, is we embraced a philosophy where all of their employees contributed content. I'll talk about that in a minute, but specifically, and here's the key, their management was totally bought in. Now, the VP of the company is a guy named Ron Novak. He made a simple statement that completely changed their philosophy as a business, and that is, if you want to work at Segway Technologies, you're in marketing. In other words, whether you're in sales, whether you're in development, whether you're in customer service, everybody was in marketing. And that's because everybody had content in other words, they were hearing questions all day long from prospects and from customers and from clients that needed to be on the company blog, that needed to be put into video format onto the company website. And that's the reason why Ron said, we are all in this together, and so if you're part of the team, you are now in marketing, and it's part of their job description. And that's one reason why Segway Technologies has done this since they embraced this philosophy in 2013 where they got their employees involved. They started producing tremendous amounts of content. Following the principles that I'm gonna be talking about of they ask, you answer. And because of this, you can see their traffic exploded from about 2,000 to 60,000 visitors a month. And this is a direct quote from Ron Novak, VP of Segway Technology. Since starting this just over 18 months ago, we can not account for at least 4 million in additional revenue because of our content marketing efforts. Now, this is a smaller business. They have about 100 employees, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying. This stuff makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. And now he's getting massive amounts of leads on his website, whereas before he rarely got any. Third quality, they don't overthink the strategy of content marketing, specifically the one that we teach to all of our clients, those segues of the world, is they ask, you answer. In other words, if anyone has ever asked you a question regarding that thing that you do, that thing that you sell about your industry. It's your moral obligation to address it and do it on your website. Whether it's good, bad, or ugly, it's your job. And if you don't do it, you're essentially inviting them to leave. You're telling them your question is not important to me. That's the essence of they ask you answer. That's the essence of becoming a great teacher. I'd ask you, if someone has asked you the question, <laughs> how many times do you think it's been searched online? I can tell you it's thousands of times. So here's what you wanna do. You wanna take the questions that you get every single day from prospects, from customers, the way they think it, the way they say it, the way they search it, and that's what you need to address on your company website through text and through video, even maybe audio, right, through a podcast. But you need to do this if you wanna become the thought leader, the go-to source, in your industry. It sounds so simple, but yet, and in, 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 in from a principle perspective, it is simple, but in terms of it actually being practiced, the principle of they ask you answer is very rare amongst companies today. You must become the best teacher in your space, the Wikipedia of your space, and it starts with they ask you answer. That's the essence of content marketing. Number four, number four, they utilize the power of insourcing. If you want to be great at this, if you want to produce a lot of content and make it good content, be it text, video, audio, whatever it is, you have to utilize what I've dubbed the power of insourcing. Now, a lot of companies, they outsource their content. In other words, they hire somebody to produce content about their company, about their brand, to tell their story. Well, nobody can tell your story like you can tell your story. And that's where insourcing comes in, where you leverage the existing talent that you have on staff, and they are the ones that are helping write these articles. They're the ones that are helping produce these videos because they hear the questions every day. They're the ones used to answering it and they represent the digital soul of your business. When you produce this content, you don't wanna be represented by somebody else. 
You want to represent you, and that is the essence of insourcing. Give you an example of what I'm talking about. Another client of mine, Krista Controla, she came to me. She's a CMO of this company, Block Imaging International, and what they do is they sell refurbished medical imaging equipment. And they do it all over the world. In other words, they'll take like an old MRI machine and they'll sell it to a health organization that can't necessarily afford a new one. In other words, they'll refurb it and then they'll resell it at much less of a price than a new MRI machine. Krista came to me and said, Marcus, I want to embrace this philosophy as they ask you answer. I want us to be the thought leaders of our space, but the problem is when I bring it up to my salespeople and ask them for their help, they don't want to help. So she said, Marcus, I need you to come and convince them that they want to help me. That was an amazing, amazing request that she made. And I went out and taught that company workshop, and we helped the salespeople see the vision of why they should participate in the content marketing efforts, how they also could be teachers. And we had 65 people in the room that day. Over 45 since that time have helped produce video and text articles that have gone on the website. What have been the results? Well, as you can see, in August of 2011, that was when we had this workshop. You see what the web traffic was like before that, and now you see what's happened to the traffic. Since that time, the green is organic traffic, the free traffic and from a search engine perspective. The yellow here is links and visitors coming from other websites. Well, they have blown up, as you can see, and the reason why they've done it is because they've had an all-in mentality and everyone has participated. I could show you multiple examples of this insourcing effort. It's incredible how it works. And the final quality that you need to embrace if you want to be great at content marketing is you need to have a single content manager for your company. You cannot expect multiple people in your company to handle this. In other words, yes, you should embrace all your employees to help produce content, but in terms of being the one person that organizes it, that is the head catalyst, the cheerleader, the organizer, all those things combined, that's your content manager. Sometimes you hear referred to as a chief content officer. I don't care what you call it, but you need to have the faith that having this person, this person on staff is going to be well worth the money you spend on them. And I can tell you minimum 10x of what you would spend on a content manager, you're going to get back to first year. If you follow these principles, but you can't expect a multiplicity of people spending a couple hours a week here and a couple hours a week there to organize this content and put it out to the world in a way that gets big time results. Let me show you one example to close of another company that's crushing it following these five principles. I'll tell you about the story of Health Catalyst. Health Catalyst, another B2B company, they're located in Utah. And what they do is they do data warehousing for hospitals. Sounds really geeky. Well, it is, but let me show you how they did an amazing thing. Health Catalyst said to me about a year and a half ago, Marcus, we want to be the leaders of our space. We want to be the go-to source, but our biggest competitors are huge. Oracle and IBM specifically are their biggest competitors. And so they had to do things differently, and they decided to embrace these five principles. First and foremost, they have one of the most forward-thinking leaders I've ever seen for organization when it comes to content marketing, a guy named Paul Horsmeyer. Now, Paul said, look, even though we have doctors and nurses that are our thought leaders, we're still going to find ways to get content from them. Yes, we're going to help them become bloggers, even though they're not necessarily, quote, bloggers. They were going to help, and they did help. And Paul has been completely involved. He hasn't wanted to just – not to be hands off. The guy has had his hands dirty in this thing we call content marketing. He's read every single article. He's helped us totally revamp the website, all of the messaging. They've done webinars. They've done videos. They've done articles. They've done white papers. They have literally become the go-to source. In fact, they've created what's called a learning center on their website. You can see right now, if you go to their website, they have a learning or a knowledge center. So if you want to consume their content via webinar or through an executive paper or through a success story. You see it all laid out right there. It's amazing what they've been able to do. And this has been the result. We started in October of 2013, and now you see what happened in October of 2014. These are the organic visitors to the site. Amazing. They've gone to about 26,000 visitors when they were getting about 3,000 to start, and that's all been 
in just over a year time period. Now you say, well, that's just traffic, Marcus. No, it's a lot more than that. Because just recently they made major news for a couple of reasons. Number one, they were given $50 million in additional revenue in their most recent round of funding, and much of it they give to the content marketing efforts. And the other thing that they were accomplished is they signed two of the biggest fish in their pond, which are Kaiser Permanente and Partners Healthcare as clients last year. Those were a big deal because, again, they were a digital David in Atlanta of Goliath. And once again, David won because David was quicker, he was more nimble, he was faster. I'm asking you to follow these principles. And if you want to read more about these principles, you can find them free on my website. It's at thesaleslion.com, www.thesaleslion.com. This ebook here is free, it costs you nothing, or you can personally email me, Marcus1 at thesaleslion.com. But I can tell you, if you follow those five principles and you do it well, you will get amazing results. Good luck.